Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever in the world you are watching, this is the 2020 World Car Awards live stream. It is a very different setting and a whole new way for us to be sharing with you the results of the most comp com comprehensive, credible, and truly global automobile honors. All results will soon be received via email to all our jurors around the world, and we will be sharing those results with you in real time. The World Car Awards are the number one awards program in the world and follow an annual calendar that sees eligible vehicles worldwide compete for the coveted trophies across five categories. 86 distinguished international automotive journalists from 24 countries make our jury. Here's what's happened so far. All right, so any of you tweeting, posting, or sharing any of this or any of the upcoming wins as well, please do use the WCOTY hashtag. That's hashtag WCOTY. And also remember to tag us. That's the World Car Awards. The New York Auto Show is where we typically have our grand culmination of this annual process. But given the situation around the world and the fact that the uh, New York show was also pushed to August, we decided to go ahead with the uh, announcement and the planned date of that announcement too and discuss the results as they were released on our website. We even have representatives from most of our top three world finalists on standby for some potential Q&A if they win. But first, the COVID-19 crisis has gripped the entire world. It's a tough time for people businesses, and whole countries with many parts of the world in complete lockdown. In the auto world, it's not just the motor shows that have been cancelled or deferred. It's also a time of huge losses, and yet the industry has stepped up with many manufacturers opening up their facilities or expertise towards making ventilators, masks, and other medical equipment and gear. Some have even allowed their premises to be used as quarantine zones. The crisis has seen many lives lost, and we continue to face a big challenge. So before we get to today's proceedings, a moment's silence to remember those whom we have lost, those who continue to fight, and also those who are committed to defeating the coronavirus. Thank you for that. Now, we have five categories to take you through. The 2020 World Car Design of the Year, World Performance Car, World Urban Car, World Luxury Car, and then the World Car of the Year 2020. Now, this is the World Car Awards, and so I'm coming to you along with, uh, well, with, there are four locations around the globe that we are coming to you from. So I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar, coming to you live from New Delhi in India. I'm also joined from the United States by Scotty Reese, who's in Austin, Texas, and George Noteris, who's in Los Angeles, California. Also with me is Carlos Sandoval, who is in Mexico City. We have some of the finalists from our top three across each category with some of my co-hosts today. And yes, we do have a global audience with us, no doubt. Thank you for joining us. And so that is also my cue to go to the other side of the planet, to George. Hi, George. Or Good actually, morning. should I say bye, George, Good because that, that looks like quite the exciting lineup behind you. How's it going? Well, I'd say it's a pretty good day here in the office when I have these two cars here. 
because it's a unique time or a really unique category. This is the performance car category, and right. one manufacturer has completely dominated it, and that is Porsche. Uh, what we've decided to do here is assemble two of the three cars in the category, but what's so unique about this, Sid, is there are three different ways to get to the performance mission. So same mission, but completely different methods. We'll start with this one, the Taycan Turbo S, that's the 2020. That is the one that has crazy amounts of power, but it does so in an incredibly technical way. We drove this together back in Pasadena in November, and then a completely different way to arrive at performance, and probably one of my favorite cars, most of my viewers know them a little bit biased towards 911s. Got one over here, an old one. Uh, this is a 992. This is the 443 horsepower base car. This is more of like the quintessential GT slash sports car, and the car that's not represented here is the 718 Spider or Cayman GT4. Uh, that was part of, of this whole um, performance category here. I just couldn't fit them under the wing of the airplane. Uh, and I just do want to point out one, one other thing here to contrast. This is performance today. That 1915 Stutz was an Indy 500 race car many over 100 years ago. All right, uh, George, that looks exciting, and I can uh, tell you that uh, everybody who's watching is going to agree with me on that. You're also staying safe. Uh, you're by yourself, I can see. You're socially distanced. Well, you can imagine most of us are hunkered down at home, and I've been doing that, but I figured, you know, let's work on some projects, so I'm hunkering down in the hangar as well. All right. I know you have more cars in that hangar with you, so I'm going to come back to you. Interesting fact about Porsche, it's uh, won that performance category a record five times. And it's only going to add to that tally today because, as you heard, all the three finalists come from the same brand. That's the first. Now, I will come back to George, as I said, but I want to quickly go to Scotty as well, who's coming to you from the roof of her home office in Austin, Texas. Howdy, Scotty. Hi, Sid. Uh, good morning from Texas. Good afternoon to you in India. And hello to everyone watching. Um, I am socially distancing here. It's just me and these three cars um, and on needles and pins here to see who wins the finalist for the most coveted award of today's announcement, World Car of the Year. So these are the three contenders, the Mazda 3, um, which was completely redesigned, and also the Mazda CX-30, which is brand new to the market, the first time that Mazda has introduced that car in North America, although they do have a similar, uh, they do have a similar platform, I believe, in Asia. Um, for Mazda, they have won the, uh, two awards before, World Car of the Year and World Design of the Year, and um, Kia, you'll see in the middle here, the Kia Telluride. This is Kia's first time up for this event. The Telluride has won quite a lot of awards. Um, and so we'll see if that holds true here. Kia, it's notable, is also up for the Urban Car Award with the Kia Soul EV. That's right. Now, Kia hasn't won a World Car Award in any category. They were in the uh, top three last year as well. But of course, the big one, like you said, is going to be the one we are watching. Big moment for both these Asian manufacturers, right, Scotty? It absolutely is. For Mazda, winning one or both of the awards they're nominated for would certainly um, validate the brand's shift to being a premium brand from a value brand. And for Kia, this would really cement the brand's inroads that they've made in their reputation in quality and design. Can't wait, just like you. And uh, thank you for that little intro with the cars that you have on the rooftop. Uh, we'll come back to you, of course, Scotty. Let me also welcome Carlos, uh, as I promised. Uh, he's with us, too. Hola, mm -hmm. Carlos. And I uh, hope you and your family are safe and well. Hola to you as well, Sid. Yeah, that is correct. We are all safe. The Mazda CX-30 uh, is made here in Mexico. And also the Mazda 3, by the way. A few months ago, we drove the Mazda CX-30 to our LA test drives because Mexico one, was one of the few markets with the car on sale at that time. Um, so we drove for more than 3,000 kilometers from Mexico City to Los Angeles in order to our fellow jurors to evaluate the car. Also, one year ago, we drove the Volvo XC40 to the New York Auto Show. So yes, as you can see, well, I like driving. And well, um, thinking about it, 
It's 2020, and the, it's important to evaluate how relevant urban cars have become of late, especially in markets like Latin America, India, Southeast Asia, and Europe, uh, where the relevance of compact vehicles is even greater. SUVs are populating this area, and uh, electric vehicles uh, can improve our living in big cities. More on this later on. Uh, ahora, para Absolutely. toda la comunidad hispanoparlante, la gente que nos escucha en español, estamos en la transmisión en vivo de la premiación de World Car Awards 2020, el premio automotriz más importante de la industria automotriz este año por las medidas especiales en las que está sucediendo todo el mundo en la pandemia del COVID. Vamos a entregar los premios en esta versión en línea a través de esta transmisión en vivo en cuatro países. El premio más importante, el auto mundial del año 2020, seguido por el auto de lujo, el auto deportivo, urbano, diseño, automotriz mundial, 2020, el, 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 el diseño automotriz del mundo, perdón, eh, 2020. Somos una organización de más de 85 periodistas especializados en todo el mundo que evaluamos cientos de, años, de autos al año. Estos son los World Car Awards. Back in English and back to you, Tim. Well, you, you preempted that because I know we have a huge interest in World Car and the smartest cruising car of the world. So, uh, yeah, welcome to all our viewers watching from uh, uh, parts of Europe and, of course, Latin America, where uh, they got everything that Carlos just said. Carlos, thank you. I will come back to you, of course, in just a bit. And uh, you know what? Uh, as we were talking over there about the urban category, uh, we mentioned that we do have other contenders there as well. And uh, so... Uh, muchas gracias, Carlos. We'll go across to uh, George again, who's uh, on the other side of his Motorman studio. Uh, George, it's uh, the compacts in the urban category now, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. We're going to the completely different side of the spectrum here. We go from performance and Porsche to two EVs. What's so interesting about this segment is uh, we've got three in the segment. Granted, I couldn't get one of the cars because it doesn't, it's not sold in North America. That's the Volkswagen. Uh, but the two that I did get, the propulsion systems are electric. And what's interesting about this segment here, or really I should say about the overall World Car Awards, is we decided to go away from talking specifically about the propulsion system, like a green car, and say, what is really the mission about the car, instead of saying, how do we get there? So in this case, these are the urban cars, something we use kind of in your part of the world, or actually, I have, I have a lot of fun driving both of these cars here. Uh, the reality of the situation is this one is new to the market. It's so new, it's not even out here in the US. This is a Kia Soul EV. We got the opportunity to drive this back in November together. Super fun to drive. And a little fun fact about this particular one here, it's an engineering car. It's actually not a media car like the rest of these cars. So while the Kia engineers are at home, working from home, and they left this at Kia Motors America headquarters, we decided to commandeer it for our program here to be able to show the cars to you guys. This is the Mini EV. And what's special about this is Mini has done electric before, but if you remember, it was a very small pilot program. This is a much wider program and will be available throughout the world. This one I'm very excited to drive because it takes the flash of the Mini, but at the end of the, end of the day, it takes all of BMW's learning of EV propulsion and puts it in a different packaging from Oxford. All right, so that looks like uh, quite the lineup. Of course, the third car in that category is the uh, Volkswagen T-Cross, which was another special car that showed up at our LA test drives because it was brought in from Germany just so our jurors could drive it. I it was a lot of fun, too. But for some reason, they wouldn't send it to me. <laughs> I think I think I suspect I know what that reason is. Uh, you know, uh, you, you probably wouldn't give it back. So, <laughs> George, thank you. Uh, we're going to come back to you uh, with a whole lot more, I know, on uh, your end of uh, things. But... You know what? I'm excited. Now, we've got to get this thing going because it's time to take you into the very first category. So let's get on with what you're really waiting for. The first category is the World Car Design of the Year. And to take us through that, let's go right back to Scotty. Thank you, Sid. So I'm here with one of the nominees for World Car Design of the Year, um, which is the Mazda 3. But it's interesting to note that uh, who has won in the past, what this, uh, the winner of this category will stand against. Jaguar Land Rover has won five times. 
Adia, oh, sorry, uh, Adi and Citroen have won twice. And this would be a repeat for Mazda if they win versus Porsche, the Taycan, and the Peugeot 208. Let's look at the video of these nominees. And I'm thrilled to share that the winner of the World Car of the Year Design Award is the Mazda 3. I have a statement from Akira Maramoto, president and CEO of Mazda Motor Corporation. Before accepting this prize, Mazda Motor Corporation would like to express our sympathy for all of those affected by the novel coronavirus. We are truly honored to be able to receive the 2020 World Car Design Award in this special year, marking the 100th anniversary of Mazda's foundation. We will continue providing our customers with unique designs, technologies, and experiences. Congratulations, Mazda. And now, on to the next one. I believe George Notaris will lead us through that. Hi, Scotty. It looks great there in Texas. I love the view of downtown Austin. It is lovely. Actually, we're looking at the Pennybacker Bridge, and uh, which is right there, and our beautiful cars and our beautiful Mazda 3. Wow, that's you know what that 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 rear three quarter. I, for me, I think that's probably what clinched it in the design. It is a gorgeous car for certain. Excellent. Well, uh, Scotty, thank you for this. I am very excited to move on to what is probably my most exciting category, and that is the performance car category, which we've discussed is dominated by the folks at Porsche. So uh, what's interesting here is we've got three different ways in which Porsche is arriving at performance. So let's find out what the nominees are. Okay, and let's go to the winner. Now, this has been a lot of debate amongst all of us here at uh, World Car, which Porsche would be it? Because if you think about it, we've got the 718 Spider that's got a manual transmission, and then we've got, of course, one of our favorites, the 911. But the winner is the new, very tech, very flash, Porsche Taycan. And to join us, we have uh, the head of research for Porta Age, Dr. Michael, Ste Dr. Michael Steiner. Welcome to World Car Awards. Okay, so we're having a little bit of production delay. Let's talk a little bit more about the Taycan here. Uh, this was a car that I, I personally had a great opportunity to drive before the car came out, as well as when the car was on the launch. And one of the most exciting things for me was well, so, so Dr. Steiner's team, they had different people from all over the Porsche spectrum. So like Porsche, they, the, the approach that they went to in building this car wasn't just let's throw a, a, an EV propulsion system into a Panamera. They literally went to the root of what the problem they're trying to solve of let's make a Porsche first one that has a different propulsion system. And they said, let's take all this chassis development that we've learned in the 911 over the years, all the chassis development that we've learned in Panamera's and Cayenne's. Do we have our uh, uh, Dr. Steiner with us? Still waiting on Dr. Steiner. So let's take all that chassis development and let's take that and put it into this new platform. So literally, in the case of the Taycan, you've got, yes, a totally new EV system, and the car is incredibly fast, but it still has the three-chamber air ride system and all the learning they've had from the larger sedans. Sir, welcome to our show. Hello, welcome, everybody. Welcome to our show. Congratulations on your win with the Taycan. Well, thank you very much. And this really in the middle of bad times we have with the coronavirus on the world. 
No, there's no doubt about it. It's definitely a challenge we're facing in the world today. And that everybody, including all of us here, have had to pivot in a way to do this. But we still want to get excited about cars because at the end of the day, we're a group of car enthusiasts. And this, is, this was a different approach for you guys. Uh, can you share with us one major development difference, how you approach the Taycan as opposed to other programs with worship? Maybe uh, the most challenge, challenging uh, thing was uh, to have this Taycan 100% uh, Porsche, uh, despite having the battery uh, sitting in the uh, bottom of the car. And to get this car as sleek and as close to the road, especially the driver, uh, we had uh, developed a special design of the battery with the so-called foot garage to get the passengers as low on the road or as close to the road as possible to give this car the typical Porsche driving experience. And on the other side, have a sleek uh, car that looks typical like a Porsche with uh, our so-called fly line that falls uh, all the, th through the back. Yes, sir. And uh, you did something interesting with the manufacturing of this car, specifically where you manufacture it within Stuttgart. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's manufactured at the heart of our company down in Stuttgart, Zuffenhausen. And we did put literally a new plan inside the existing plan where we produce the 911, the box and the Cayman. So in the middle of the existing production plant, uh, all production still running, we established this new plant for the Taycan. Now, the Taycan, it's not just the propulsion system that's different, it's not just the design that's different. You guys also made a change to the operating system on the UX. Uh, what was the goal there? Uh, we had the vision to give the customer also a strong digital um, experience in this car. So we tried to get rid of as much switches as possible. Only the uh, UX you need to drive the car are still uh, physically. All other uh, is driven by uh, touch touch uh, dials uh, by speech uh, recognition. So uh, this car has a great digital experience. Excellent. Well, Dr. Steiner, thank you very much for joining us and congratulations again on really what is an epic win in the performance car category of World Car Awards 2020. Thank you again and bis später. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now I, we switch from performance car category back to Carlos, where we talk about urban cars. Well, 2020 World Urban Car. Actually, this is our youngest category, introduced just four years ago to recognize the growing relevance of compact vehicles all over the world. BMW, Volkswagen, and Suzuki have won it in the past, and today we may have another win for Volkswagen or a first ever winner in this category. These are the three cars that made it through our two rounds of voting. Kia Soul EV, Mini Cooper Electric SE, and the Volkswagen T-Cross. And we just received the official press release. The 2020 World Urban Car is the Kia Soul EV. Congratulations, Kia, and joining us for sharing this prize. Michael Cole, President Kia North America Motors, uh, uh, North America. Michael, good morning and congratulations. Hi, good morning. Thank you. This is great news. I'm uh, early morning here in California, so uh, good to get some good news right now. We're very, very happy. Thank you to all the jurors for uh, giving Soul EV this uh, great accolade. 
Well, let us know in, in terms of overall impact that a specific model has on the brand and uh, at the whole, how does a model like the Soul EV compare with uh, a full-size SUV like the Telluride, for example? Sure. I, I think the main thing is when you're building a brand like we are with Kia, um, getting into some of this new innovation area, the new technologies, so electrified vehicles is obviously a really important position and a territory for us to take. We know that the you know globally, uh, electric vehicles were almost at a tipping point. I think we're going to see the the big growth. So, becoming established as a brand that offers great electric vehicle technology is very important to us. So, you have the different ends of the stream. Obviously, someone like Telluride is a halo vehicle for us, but Solely V says you know we're also able to offer you know vehicles. Uh, that meet that requirement of an increasing number of customers that are looking for, you know, uh, environmentally friendly, uh, new new technology. So um, Soul EV has really demonstrated that, I think, in abundance, just how, how good our company is at making these types of vehicles. Will, do you think that the, will urban mobility of the future will always be connected with the sharing services or is there still future for the ownership models? Yeah, I think it's interesting and, it, and it'll vary again in different uh, markets around the world. I mean, here in the US, we know with the vast territories and the size and distances that people have to cover, car ownership is still very much, um, I think, a part of the, the, the future um, ownership model or the usage model. Of course, when you're in more urban areas, uh, there are uh, you know increasing demands, certainly from some of the younger generations, for car sharing type services. Uh, so I, I think it's a it's a it's a difficult one to really call by market exactly at what pace things will happen. Uh, but yeah, I think there is still strong demand. We see it certainly right now uh, that there are plenty of customers who still want their own private mobility. Now, whether that's through ownership or whether it's through, you know, leasing type or, or subscriptions even, but but not everyone wants the, the car sharing model. How how fast are you are we seeing electrification go through the rest of the Kia lineup? Yeah, we have some strong plans. I mean, we we announced um, our CEO announced early this year our strategy uh, to have by 2025 globally 11 electrified vehicles. We uh, we've announced that we'll have a, a dedicated electric vehicle uh, next year. Um, obviously, that'll be then rolled out to different markets around around the world. Uh, so it's a very strong uh, strategic direction of ours to to have an electric vehicle footprint with both dedicated uh, and uh, you know the derivative EVs uh, as part of our product lineup going forward. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Congratulations again. Thank you. Very happy. Thank you for the award. Much appreciated. Now back to India. Back to you, Sid. Thanks very much, Carlos. That is absolutely historic because uh, congratulations to Kia. It's the first ever Korean product to win at the World Car Awards. So this is very historic for all of us at the World Car Awards. Congratulations so far then to Kia. Mazda, and of course, Porsche with the Taycan, the all-electric sports car. Very excited. And so the next award we want to introduce to you is the World Luxury Car of the Year 2020. And typically, it's an all-German affair. Well, the category itself debuted in 2014, with Mercedes-Benz having won it three times. Audi has won twice. BMW has won once. And that means this year, too, Mercedes could add to its tally, or we welcome another German. Here are the final three. It's the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the Porsche 911, and the Porsche Taycan. All right, so you've seen that the Porsche Taycan showed up in design. It also showed up here in luxury. You had the 911 and the Taycan, of course, in performance. And the Taycan's already won one award. So we're just standing by now to uh, figure out who has won. I'm awaiting that uh, email to come in. Uh, because remember, the awards are being declared first by our tabulator KPMG to our jurors worldwide. 
And then, of course, we are subsequently announcing it to you here on the live stream. So all three products, very credible and not typically what you would associate as luxury or at least the past definition of uh, luxury. Let me quickly uh, go back to Carlos for a second there. Uh, Carlos, uh, cars like uh, the uh, 911 still evoke a lot of passion even in your market, right? Yes, of course. 911 is one of the favorites. In the morning, we were discussing about this, and it's interesting how, how Porsche is also becoming a, a, a symbol in terms of uh, luxury, not only sportiness, of course, and uh, we were also discussing with Scotty and George in the morning that do you think that it's only manufactured quality or product finishes or the assembly itself that matters for a luxury car is also the right quality, suspension, and so on. So at the end, yes, we have a very interesting uh, three finalists in this category. I'm not, I'm not quite sure if only the finishers or the way the car is made or manufactured will count on this, but also the right quality. So it's interesting who, right. who will have this prize now. All right, so I have the result and I can announce it to you now. Remember, you've got two Porsches on the running. You've got the Mercedes-Benz EQC and the winner for the World Luxury Car 2020. It's a double win for Porsche with the Taycan. So uh, a lot of people expected that to perhaps happen and uh, no doubt about it. Extremely, extremely strong here. And uh, we got to see if we can once again connect with uh, Dr. Steiner because uh, this is the second win now for uh, Porsche. Dr. Steiner, congratulations, and uh, you must be feeling very happy right now. Yes, I'm very happy, and I'm proud of my whole team. Speaking of which, uh, this car is in so many ways the, almost like a modern icon for Porsche. It's almost as representative of where the brand is today as the 911 has always been for the brand. Uh, speak to us a little bit about that. Indeed, um, the Taycan um, should and will be our icon designed, let me say, for the new world. And it's indeed not only a very sporty one, but it's also a luxury car. I've got to ask you this question. What, according to you, is the main status driver in the luxury car segment for the future then? From, my, or from our point of view, uh, the, the driver... Uh, is still technology oriented. Um, he's looking for fun to drive and for, let me say, a very precise working technical tool. Um, at the same, he's looking for a connected and for a digital modern experience of a fully electric car. All right, and uh, I have to then also ask you, of course, the obvious question that's on everyone's mind, the learnings from the Taycan you were discussing earlier with George as well. Uh, where does that take you, especially when you look at that powertrain, what it's able to do uh, with future vehicles? Um, what's laying ahead is uh, we have to look for more efficiency and for sure also for reducing weight of the fully electric powertrain. All right. And my last question to you then, uh, double win. It's not happened for Porsche in the past at the World Car Awards. Also, the uh, first win for you in, in luxury. Uh, I know it's a difficult time that we are in right now, but uh, once things get better, once all the lockdowns lift, uh, is there going to be a big uh, celebration for uh, all of you in Zuppenhausen? Maybe not a big celebration, but we are proud, proud and thankful uh, for this double win. And um, like always, uh, that will lead to even better uh, cars in future. Thank you very much. Before I let you go, Dr. Schneider, I must tell you, I must share with you, in fact, that uh, when the Taycan came to our Los Angeles test drives, it was perhaps uh, the most anticipated car uh, at that event. A lot of people stayed early, uh, got up early, stayed later just to be able to drive it. And so uh, I can tell you that it really did create a sense of excitement in our entire process this year. So many congratulations to you and the team. So thank you also for this feedback. Thank you very much. All right. So that was Dr. Steiner from Porsche AG, and he was, of course, receiving and accepting virtually uh, the award for the World 
luxury car 2020. The Taycan gets a double win. So that is another little bit of history that just got made. Uh, guys, let me quickly bring you in because we went through the four categories. I know we still have World Car of the Year remaining, but uh, I want to get some quick reactions from you. George, uh, you must be happy. The Porsches. Very, very excited about this, although a little bit surprised. You know, I, I, I kind of wanted to see the 718 Spider win be, simply because it has a manual transmission. But y you and I were discussing this back in Los Angeles. We were, if money was going to be put on it, it was going to be the Taycan simply because it is. it was a moonshot for Porsche. They, they not only made an electric car, like I was saying earlier, they could have easily just put an electric propulsion system into a Panamera, and everybody would have bought them. This was one of these instances where they said, no, we're going to completely re-engineer what a Porsche is. But look at it. You can see it over my shoulder here. No one, even my grandmother, would look at that car and say, yeah, that's a Porsche. All right. Uh, I know you've got the Taycan right there with you, so the double winner with you. Scotty, you've got a winner with you as well in the Mazda 3, but uh, quick reactions on the wins so far from you. Yeah, I mean, the Mazda is incredible. Um, I had a chance to actually spend a lot of time with the Mazda 3 earlier in uh, 2019 and then a little bit of time with it uh, this week, and it's such a great car. It really just... Um, not only ticks off all the things that people need in a car, but it actually satisfies the driving experience. And uh, with a very sizable back seat, it's great for families. And it really is sized perfectly for any city in the in the world. So um, taking that a step further and really creating a world-class design, it doesn't look like all the yeah. things it might look like on paper. It's a pretty great uh, car. And we're still waiting to see if it wins the world car of the year. It's here. I have it here with the Kia Telluride and the Mazda CX-30 to see, uh, to have all the finalists side by side. Um, we're on pins and needles here to know who's going to take away the grand prize. Well, I can tell you that uh, the anticipation, I mean, I'm tempted to ask you guys now to sort of, you know, tell us what you think, because uh, Carlos, I know you're, you're, you're standing by there as well, but I, I think uh, I have information now that the email has been sent out. So I'm just awaiting mm -hmm. that. Let's, in the meanwhile, get on with it then, folks. Uh, I, we'll come back to you, Carlos, in a bit. Another German win in the luxury class. And now, drum roll, please. It is the big one. The one that we've all been dying to know since, the began, uh, since this whole process began. Uh, the final three that are in the running, you can see them with Scotty. Uh, she just sort of showed us those three cars. The Kia Telluride, the Mazda 3, and the Mazda CX-30. The first time that we had two cars from one brand making it to the top three for our finalists for the World Car of the Year. All right, so those are then the top three. It's been a huge, grueling process, and all those three cars should feel very proud at this point, the manufacturers behind them, the teams behind them, but only one can win, and it is time now to reveal that winner to you. Let me open this up. Exciting moment, folks. I can tell you this is going to make a lot of waves around the world. The winner for the World Car of the Year 2020 is... The Kia Telluride, it is the car that many people expected might take it all, and it has done just that. It beat the odds. You had two Mazdas in the running, and yet Kia has come from behind and taken the big trophy. It's a double win for Kia because the Soul EV won Urban Car of the Year, and now you've got the Telluride as well. That is, of course, with Scotty right there in Austin on the rooftop. But before anything else, uh, we'd like to get in Kia's management back here onto the, uh, onto the broadcast. Remember that uh, we had Michael Cole speaking with us just a short while earlier. Uh, we're going to go back to Michael right now, President Kia Motors America. Michael, this is absolutely stunning. It is great news. Many, many congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we're obviously ecstatic with the win. Um, just and we all need good news at times like this. We're obviously happy to, to have this. And again, thank you to uh, the team there that have. Uh, made this selection 
and I've got to thank all of our team, obviously. There are so many people involved in this project, um, particularly our design team here in California under Tom Cairns. Done a great job. Uh, we think we bought uh, the perfect vehicle to the market at the right time. A big, bold, boxy, mid-size SUV. Uh, it's been a, an absolute storm for us. So uh, thank you for the award. We're, we're thrilled with it. Really, really pleased, really happy. Thank you. This does make a statement in so many ways, uh, Michael. I have to, uh, you know, sort of also remind our viewers um, and everyone who's watching, this is firstly the first time ever that we have a Korean car winning World Car of the Year. It's also back to, uh, you know, your, your sort of petrol head grunt machine. Uh, as you mentioned, this is that big SUV. It's not like what we've seen in the past with EVs sort of, you know, uh, going ahead and taking the big prize. Uh, the time you brought this car to market, I know, especially in North America, there was a lot riding on it. It was also very crucial for that market. Talk us through that process of, uh, you know, when it finally got the green light to go to market. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're right. It was it was important for us because this is still the second biggest segment in the U.S. market, the midsize SUV, and we didn't have a vehicle in that territory. So it was an important vehicle for us in terms of you know establishing ourselves as a as a real top tier brand, a, a, a tier one brand in the U.S. And we we did it with a vehicle we think you know really met all the requirements of, of the consumer, not only in terms of the design. The performance, the technology, and the safety features, of course, Kia's great value, long warranty, and the reaction we had to the vehicle from consumers and, of course, from our dealers uh, showed that we'd got it just right. Um, and I guess this is recognition from all of the, the, the jurors around the world uh, that they think we got it right too. So it was an important vehicle for us in terms of our you know, opportunity here in the U.S., not only from a sales perspective, but also from a brand position. And we very much leveraged Telluride to demonstrate just what our brand is all about, exciting vehicles, adventure vehicles, um, you know, and making the brand a more emotional brand. Uh, and clearly uh, that's had a, a, a big impact on the success we enjoyed in the U.S. Uh, in, in 2019. As you can see, we're all sort of grinning here, uh, Michael. I mean, we've uh, luckily been able to drive the car quite extensively, myself included, so I can totally understand where you're coming from. Um, lots of questions, by the way, that we got sort of preempting, you know, whoever wins. We had different sets of questions coming from all our jurors around the world. So I'm going to quickly just dip into a couple of those. Um, okay. the, the one which is possibly the most popular question, um, how soon before the Telluride makes it to other markets around the world? And uh, <laughs> is that plan, well, you know, at yeah. all on the anvil? Well, this this is, uh, I guess, the, the nice challenge you have when you have a vehicle that is so successful. The vehicle is manufactured here at our facility in Georgia. We've got a great team of dedicated, hardworking people there that, that build this vehicle. Um, we can sell everyone we get right now, to be honest, here in the U.S. I, I don't think any of us have seen a vehicle with the level of continued uh, demand you know, we, we turn every vehicle, as soon as it leaves our plant, gets to the dealer, it's out the door. We know we have lead time still, you know, 15 months on from the launch of the vehicle. So it's it's a challenge for us right now. We're looking at how, obviously, the current situation has put a challenge in for us. But we have been looking at how we increase production capacity in Georgia to meet the demand in the U.S. before we even start to think about whether it could be made available in uh, in other markets. Well, I can speak for our market. I know there's lots of people who'd love to see it come here to India, but uh, I, I won't put you on the spot any further on that one. Uh, there's another interesting question that came in about uh, the World Car Award itself. How valuable is that to your business as a company? Uh, tr tremendously valuable. I, I, and I, I'd almost say even more so because it is from the world jurors where this vehicle is still very much a North American, you know, vehicle. So to have that recognition from, from the jurors who don't have the vehicle available in their markets, I think just is a testament to how good this vehicle is and, and how much demand potentially we could we could meet around the world. So it's it's a great accolade uh, to have so many experienced, knowledgeable journalists you know uh nominate this vehicle or, or select this vehicle for the for the world car of the year is we're hugely proud we're uh, you know so couldn't be more thrilled with it so so thank you it's a, it's a huge accolade 
Um, now, I have to also ask you, Michael, it's a really crowded segment, of course, where the Telluride operates. Um, so what's uh, made it so popular in your uh, reckoning? I mean, of course, it's the design. I know you're going to say it's the engineering, but uh, what's that one sort of X factor you think that really gets people excited? As you said, you can't seem to make enough of them to be able to even sell them just in the U.S. Yeah. market. I think it's exactly, it's the combination of all those factors. I mean, listen, everyone makes great vehicles. We know that, you know, it's in a very tough segment. You're right. It's in a pretty crowded segment, but it's still a strong segment. And if you get the combination of all those factors right, not only in terms of the design, the engineering, the technology, the safety, the value, but also I think it's the way, you know, we communicate. We were, you know, we, we had a different way of going to market with Telluride than maybe we've had before. We we use this local North or US philosophy of give it everything. And we talked about how we had these hardworking people in our Georgia facility. You know, this was a, a, a town where we make the car where there was a lot of unemployment 10 years ago. Uh, Kia opened up a facility, re-employed a lot of people from that market there passionate about the brand and that comes across in everything they do with all the products that manufacture down there at West Point, Georgia. So it's it's it was a message, it was a chance for us to promote not only do we have this great vehicle, but it's backed by a by a team of committed, passionate people. And we demonstrated that through our communication with our give everything message when we launched the vehicle at Super Bowl last year. Uh, and I think that combination of not only a great product but a great communication uh, has enabled us to really build some huge momentum with the product and make it such a, a desirable vehicle. It's got to be matched by the quality of the product, but I think you know the way we position the vehicle in the market was also uh, just, just right. Now, I know we should have been at the New York Auto Show right now having this conversation in person, but uh, at the last New York Auto Show, I remember when the vehicle was shown, it did create this massive buzz. I have to ask you about the styling. Uh, you know, in this entire crowded segment that we spoke about, there's so much emphasis on on crossover styling, a lot of uh, luxurious chrome and embellishment. And here came this car, which was almost sort of clutter breaking in terms of its very upright, very uh, muscular and very butch stance. Do um, you think that's that's another thing that's really worked? I do. I, and I have to give huge credit to Tom Cairns and the team here at our California Design Studio. They were behind this project from the concept I think four, four years ago. They had this idea to make a, I'd almost say a very traditional, you know, uh, SUV. Uh, and it was about being upright, being big, bold and boxy. Uh, and they got it right. And when we looked at how we wanted to, you know, focus on the on the vehicle, we talked about it being rugged and it included putting things like black wheels on it, you know, and it and it just created this image of a, of a tough vehicle, uh, you know. So whilst the vehicle has great, you know, on-road presence and ability, you know, it does have that appearance and it has the capability, obviously, for, for off-road as well. And I think that was important in terms of making a statement of, of what this product represented for the Kia brand. Uh, so the guys did a great job. I think it was absolutely spot on and is spot on for the market in terms of this uh, big, bold, boxy and rugged sort of appearance that so many U.S. consumers really are drawn to. You know, I know all of us motoring hacks have the reputation of being hard to please. And it was one of those rare times where we loved the concept. And then when the production car came out, we were like, whoa, this is even sort of cooler looking. You know, it kind of beats the concept. That doesn't happen very often, does it? You're yeah, right. And again, testament to so many people in our organization across Kia Motors Corporation, because everyone was really keen to do that. We knew we had a concept that had been, you know, received, you know, as a bit of a wow and, and keeping it as true to that concept as possible while still being able to deliver, you know, a, a vehicle that we could get onto market, you know, with all the features, the specification at a good price. You know, a lot of people paid, played a huge role in doing that. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got to give testament to all of those people uh, for, for their great efforts. Well, I can tell you that uh, it's got us very excited. We uh, are sure that the excitement at Kia is going to spread around the world as well. Uh, from all of us here at World Car, on behalf of the 86 World Car jurors, my colleagues on the award steering committee, and of course our founders too, many congratulations to you and your colleagues around the world, Michael. Okay, well, thank you. So we're absolutely thrilled. Uh, Thank you for the recognition and the award, and please, everyone, stay safe. Absolutely. That is a very important message. Huge, huge win for Kia Motors with the Kia Telluride taking the 2020 World Car of the Year title. Thanks to all our viewers who have been watching as well. And, guys, uh, I know you're all still hanging in there, and you're with me. Uh, exciting stuff. I mean, we, we've always been on tenterhooks when it came to this entire process. 
dying to know who's going to win. And uh, here we are with all the five winners declared. So uh, let's let's get all all three of you back in, I think. And uh, let me get some quick reactions from you guys. Carlos, I promise I'll come to you first. So two wins for Kia. That's that's big stuff. Two wins for Kia, two wins for Porsche, one win for Mazda. That was super interesting. You know, at the beginning, we, we thought that Mazda had 66.6% uh, of chances to get the big prize, and it didn't came. But um, I found it interesting. I just I was just seeing my video, my test drive of this Kia Telluride we, we, when we drove it back then in November in Los Angeles. And uh, I, I was just listening to myself. And I was thrilled, like, was, oh, what do these guys did to this car? It's comfortable, it's very well equipped. And when, when, when you put it, like, all together with all the facts and, and stuff, you see, okay, maybe they, this, of course, this car deserve it. And it's just one man's perspective. But when you, we put it against the other 85 jurors, at the end, it's a winner. It's, it's super, super, super interesting. Of course, I drove the Mazda CX-30 from Mexico to L.A., and we were expecting, oh, maybe that worked somehow. But yeah, actually, this might bring the Kia Telluride to the Mexican market. Mexican market. So hopefully, we, we have to wait for that. And uh, yeah. then again, congratulations to Kia and also to, to Mazda because they made well two of the three finalists to this category. You, you've uh, taken the words out of my mouth. I mean, we would love to see it come to India as well for the same reasons. I think it hit all, it hits a lot of those high notes. Uh, it could be a Terrific flagship for uh, for Kia here in India, which is relatively young in India, by the way. Kia has just been around for about a little more than a year. And um, Scotty, you've got the car with you. So you're like the lucky one. <laughs> you know, we always knew that you're going to end up with the World Car of the Year tonight for sure. Uh, I know that, they, you know, as we've been saying, there isn't a whole lot of celebrating that one can do. But you've actually got the car with you. That's exciting. I do, Sid, and I'm thrilled not just to have the Telluride, but also the Mazda 3 that won the design award. But with the Telluride, um, I'll share that I am not surprised at all. For so many people around the world, we have learned that our car is our haven and time with our family is what matters. And family cars have really driven the U.S. market, the North American market for so long. So I am not surprised at all that the Kia Telluride is the one that took home the big prize. It's well done. I can see it driving across savannas and high desert and all these places around the world where you need the all-wheel drive capability, but you also need to have your people with you as well. So I I think it says a lot about what Kia's determination can do. I think it also says a lot about what consumers really want out of their car. Uh, George, uh, the fact that Kia has now not one but two World Car Awards, the trophies will reach them subsequently, of course. But uh, the excitement of that for a brand like Kia, uh, you know, we have had Asian manufacturers win in the past, but this becomes truly special. And two, not just one. You know, the, as I've been watching this whole thing unfold and listening to Michael talk about the ways in which they had to, go, to get to, the, to a world car win in two categories, I can't help but think about my neighbor, and it tells the story of Kia perfectly. So I live in Los Angeles, California, and everybody here is very conscious about their cars, not just people who are car people like us. So I've got this neighbor who has his wife drove a Lexus, he drives a G-Wagon, and they got to the point where they were going to replace the car. And they realized, well, what do we get? And you think someone living in the South Bay of Los Angeles, they're going to get a Lexus, they're going to get a Mercedes, they're going to get something with a fancy badge. They didn't even think twice. They went and looked at both the Palisade and the Telluride, and they went and bought the Telluride. And I would argue just five years ago, a buyer like that wouldn't have taken a Kia or a Hyundai seriously. They would have been laughed out of the cocktail parties of Los Angeles, like, oh, my God, you bought a Kia. But this is a statement not just to how important the Kia Telluride is. It's a statement of all the cars over the past five or ten years that Kia has come out with that has said, OK, A, they're reliable, B, they're good looking, and C, they've got a lot of value. And I think that's the big win here. Oh, absolutely agree with you on that. And I'm sure that uh, Scotty and Carlos agree too, because if you look at it, uh, you know, even the Soul EV, the level of engineering, we all love the car. I mean, I've had the chance to drive it in Korea and, of course, at the LA test drive event. I would love to be driving it here in New Delhi because uh, it, it sort of hits all the right points. 
It's not just green. It's also fun to drive. It's also really nice on the inside. You've got good plastics on it. Uh, in markets like ours, uh, especially Carlos, uh, stuff like that, I think really goes a long way, isn't it? Yes, of course. I, I totally agree. I mean, we we need this this cars in the market, of course, it depends mostly on the manufacturing possibilities of the brands for, for doing this. Uh, I, I, I cannot tell any much more about this. I, I was at the beginning just thinking that uh, it could be difficult for them because it's mo mostly focused on the U.S. market. But yes, of course, vehicles like this will make great because of the height to the floor and stuff like that in countries like ours where, where the roads are not the best, of course, and the seating capabilities. I mean, it's a seven-seater uh, uh, with a very economic engine, actually. It won't take much fuel for moving seven people inside. So at the end, I, I think it's a very practical vehicle uh, in general. Well, I'll tell you, in India, we would love to have a diesel variant. Uh, I, I know that in the U.S., they don't have that. The Palisade, its sister car, does have a diesel in Korea. But, uh, well, you know, we can, we can always wait and be optimistic about that. Guys, last words from all of you. Uh, what we've done today, of course, is the first time uh, also for the World Car Awards to go digital like this. Um, exciting. Uh, Scotty, was this fun for you today? Absolutely. I love being able to be a part of this, even though I'm socially distancing um, and here in Austin, Texas. I wish I was in New York this week. That's where certainly where my heart is. But I'm glad to be able to have these three cars here in the in the garage with me um, and to be able to share this news worldwide, not only with our audience and with all the manufacturers, but also with you guys. Thank you. It would have been fun to be in New York, that's for sure. But uh, uh, George, last words from you as well before we sign off. Well, as the only official New Yorker here, I am definitely sad not to be in New York this week. And my heart goes out to all my fellow New York folks who are facing a challenge right now. Uh, but I got to say, this this was a lot of fun. You know, granted, I'm a little bit biased because, Sid, this is what you and I do on a regular basis is video like this. And here's a different example of how we did this. We'd love to have some feedback from you guys in the comments below on all our social channels on World Car as well as Scotty's uh, socials and, and Carlos's and mine. And, Sid, we'd love to hear feedback on what you thought about this presentation because we'd like to do more of this. And then very selfishly, at the New York Auto Show, I don't think I would have been able to get in the performance car of the year and go do some launch control starts after this. <laughs> there, there's a couple of reasons why I've been envious of you and Scotty, and you've just named one of them. Uh, <laughs> Carlos, uh, I, I leave the last word to you then as well. I, I am thrilled. Uh, mostly congratulations to every single brand who made it to the finalist in every single category. And especially congratulations to all those, well, actually three brands who make it to the finals. Two for Porsche, two for Kia, and one for Mazda. Congratulations. Great products, everyone. I'm, I'm thrilled. The, uh, I, I won in my head three out of five, so I'm not that wrong about having the big picture of what's happening. Thank you, guys. Thank you, George. Thank you, Scotty. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, all, all the people who made this possible. And of course, some feedback will always help to improvise. So, so, sorry, to improve ourselves. And also, stay, stay safe. Take care of yourself, take care, take care of others and your family and friends. Take care of everybody. Oh, absolutely. Couldn't be more important to remember that. And of course, quick thanks also from all of us to our sponsors and partners through the year. Prime Research, News Press, ZF, Autoname, Brembo, KPMG, and yes, the New York Auto Show as well, where, as we've been saying, we would love to be right now. Thank you all for joining in. Now, we're in different time zones bringing this to you. As everybody has said, we would love your feedback. So please, please send that in in truckloads. And uh, we would, of course, definitely. In fact, if you count uh, our tabulator and our you know, very meager production team in Toronto, then you've got uh, five locations that we're coming to you from today. So we've been very careful with how we put this broadcast together for you, uh, staying socially distant, staying completely sort of separated from each other, and yet bringing you what is undoubtedly a lot of very key information to the automobile industry worldwide. It is the World Car Awards, and we do have our five winners for 2020. So thank you so much for watching. And as Carlos said, and as everybody has been saying, stay home, stay safe, take care, and good night.